Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Glory be to God. Today we're talking about divine protection. Uh, the Paris attacks kind of bring home again or re reignite the um, passions and thoughts of 9-11 here in our country. And um, we are living in very, you know, the Bible says in the last days, perilous times will come. Perilous. Are we living in perilous times? Not just perilous times, perilous. And, um, you know, we were, we've been in parts of that of town where the attacks took place. Um, um, I think one area was, I, I forgot exactly where it was near. But we, we were in that area, not too far from the Eiffel Tower, but it was another, it was another place we've been in the area. Huh? Oh, it was, it was uh, in the, near the Louvre, the Louvre, the, uh, the museum, the Louvre. Uh, it was not too far from there, one of those, which is where the Champs-Élysées comes down and comes up to where the Louvre is down there, which was the old castle or, you know, palace until Louis moved it out to Versailles, and then they got their head cut off. Anyway, hey, anyway, uh, but when the last time we were in Paris, the, the, uh, the uh, Muslims had created a havoc there. This has been about 10 years they, the area of the town that they had all kind of migrated to and taken over, they were burning cars, turning over vehicles, burning it, just, you know, just, uh, and that's, but listen, this isn't just in France, it's everywhere in the world. Um, Satan is using Islam uh, to wreak havoc on the planet um, under the guise of a religion, and, which it's not, and, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's horrible. We're living in, and, you know, and listen, they're, they're saying that these, you know, they got on the news and said there's no credible threat, which, which means this. There's a threat. They just don't know if it's, if it's real or not. You know, no credible threat. What means they really don't know. Okay? I mean, with all the intelligence of the world, they didn't know this was coming. France has one of the high, I'm, I'm going to paint the picture for you, but that's okay, because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna paint over that picture when I get done. Okay? Um, France has extremely strict gun control laws. You know, when people come out, oh, if we just get rid of the you know, Feinstein said a few, about a couple months ago, if all the people who have guns would turn their guns in, if all the uh, law-abiding citizens turn their guns in, then the criminals would too, because that's just human nature. Uh, you even spoke of some of that funny weed that's out there in California. Okay? I mean, it's just, you know, my little clip keeps coming off. Uh, Give me a break. France says extremely, you know, oh, we can't have, um, you know, assault weapons, you know, we, so we're going to ban assault weapons. Guess what kind of weapons they were using? In a gun control country, extreme gun, assault weapons, okay, grenades, blowing up, blow up vests. We're living in very difficult times. And so, you know, TV paints a picture. You get all there, you listen to all the analysts. This is coming to America. We've had our 9-11 now. We're going to start seeing, you know, eventually we're going to see it in our streets. Da, da, and they just go on and on and on. And they're painting the picture of absolute fear for everybody. Okay? So this morning we're going to talk about divine protection. All right? Because I want you to know something. Even though the world is, is at risk, and even though the world is insecure, and even though there's all kinds of stuff going on in the world, Jesus is Lord. God is on the throne. His angels are commissioned and charged by the Most High to watch over us. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. So we're going to start here. Number one, the divine protector. Who is the divine protector? Well, we know it's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, Psalm 18.2 says the Lord. That's caps. So it's Jeho Jehovah or Yahweh. And really we can say it this way, the covenant God. Okay? Instead of just saying the Lord, we can say the covenant God is my rock. He's my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. In other words, he's our defense. He's our deliverer. He's our protection. Some, come on now. Now, I'm already preaching a little bit better than you are saying amen. All right? So listen. We're not going to be the first church of the frozen chosen. We're not going to be the first church of the has been. We're going to be the church that's on fire for God. Amen. That gets hooked up, connected, stirred up, fired up, ramped up, and ready to go. So somebody shout. 
Right, that's better. All right. Hallelujah. The Father is our protector. The Son, 2 Timothy 4, 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood by me and strengthened me that by, that by me might, the preaching might be fully known, that all Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. This is symbolic. He wasn't talking about an actual lion. He was talking about the, the Satan who goes about as a roaring lion had come after him. He had been delivered out of the mouth of the lion. <clears throat> and the Lord shall deliver me from what? Every evil work. Hallelujah. And will, he won't just deliver me. He will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So, after you turn off Geraldo, and you turn off Shepherd, and you turn off the MSNBC and the CNN crowd, and you turn off the Looney Bin crowd, you turn off all the other stuff where they told you how bad it was, how bad it's going to get, how destructive it's going to be. I'm telling you, let's understand this, that your fortress, your deliverer, your safety, your, sa your, your deliverer, and your preserver is God Almighty. Hallelujah. Jesus is on, the, is on, the, on watch. Hallelujah. Can you say Amen. Come on, church. You know, we can't be afraid. We got to be bold as a lion, praise God. We got to know that God is on our side, hallelujah. That when the enemy works against us, our God is for us. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can somebody shout glory? glory. The Holy Ghost, Isaiah 59, 19. We quote this all the time. So they shall, so they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Hallelujah. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. That's what the world's telling us. The enemy's coming in like a flood. The enemy's been unleashed. The enemies are coming against us. And listen, I know this. The righteous rejoice when, I mean, the people rejoice when the righteous reign. I know that in our government officials, our nation has voted in, I mean, politicians from the bottom rung to the top rung who are ungodly, who are, don't care about America, don't care about God, don't care about a lot of stuff. And I'm not just talking about one person. I'm talking about all throughout politics. You know, we have unrighteous people ruling. But I want you to know something. Come in, come in, look at me now. I want you to know something. That you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can stand in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation and trust in God. And God will deliver you. God will protect you. God will overshadow you. And even in all the stuff that's going on in the world, you will be able to stand as a believer and stand in victory and stand protected because God Almighty is your God. Amen. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, anybody ever seen a flood? Ever been by, you know, seen flood pictures on television? You can take your car out in the flood, you can take your, your SUV, your big old tank out there, and it'll float it down the river. Hello. I'm telling you, you know, you, you, you're, you're not going to be able to, you can't stop a flood in the natural. They'll, put, they'll go out and put sandbags up, and it'll just wash it away. It'll go right over the top of it. Take houses out. I'm telling you, in the natural, there is no defense against the flood, but I thank God that I'm not limited to the natural. I'm not limited to my abilities. I'm not limited to having my concealed carry and my AK-47 and my own bag of grenades. I'm not against any of that. Uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't have any problem with people having stuff to protect themselves, but I want you to know that when it comes in like a flood, your, your little concealed carry is not going to be able to handle everything. You might be able to stop one here or one there, but if they've got 15 out there with assault weapons, your little, you know, seven mag, a little, it's not going to stop all of them. I'm not against it. As a matter of fact, I think it's all right to have it. I need to go get mine. Huh? You too. And, and I'm pulling this back up. It's aggravating me. Hallelujah. But I want you to know when the flood comes, when there are attacks everywhere and people are just pulling out assault weapons and blowing people away, I want you to know this. Folks, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. What's that standard? That banner of victory. It is the banner. It is the standard that this is my people. They are protected by me. You can't come against them. Hallelujah. You can, I mean, you can just pull it out and you can go for it. But Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Come on now. Jesus is Lord. 
Amen. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. How to come on now? We will remember the name of the Lord our God. Children, don't let your teenagers be afraid. Don't let your children be afraid. I'm telling you, when they start talking, about, oh, mom and daddy, the stuff's going on in the world is bad. The teachers are telling us the school is horrible. We're watching the newscast and it's really bad. You just say, listen, I want you to know something, honey, uh, son. I want you to know this, son. I want you to know this, darling. I want you to understand this: that when the enemy is coming in like a flood, the Almighty God the creator of heaven and earth the one who is and was and is to come glory to God he will raise up a standard against the enemy and his divine protection is over you glory to God you can trust the Lord he will deliver you he will preserve you he is your fortress he is your safety he is your protector he's your covering glory to God and put faith in them that they're not going to go under they're going to win praise God and if God's got enough bullets out of the air he's going to knock bullets out of the air because we're putting our trust in God Come on now. In Nigeria, a few years ago, when the embassy was blown up, uh, uh, a lot of people were connected with Jerry Savelle's ministry over there. He would go over there and so forth, and people were worked in the embassy. And they were on their way to work that morning, and it, it was on the inside, they heard the Holy Ghost say, drop to the ground. And when they did, they left flat out on the ground, and the person beside them got blown away. Why? Because the Lord had, they were trusting in the Lord. The person beside them, if they had listened and trusted in the Lord, they, could, they would have heard the same message. On day of 9-11, many people testified later that they woke up that morning and, and, and in their heart, the Lord said, don't go to work. He wasn't just telling a few, he was telling everybody, don't go to work. Are you here? You need to put faith in your children. You need to put faith in your family. You need to understand that the world is getting worse and worse. Darkness is getting darker and darker. But I want you to know in that darkness, the light shines brighter and brighter. And the scripture that says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world is more just as true now as the day that the apostle John wrote it in the in script, as scripture. I want you to know that that same Holy Ghost who is greater in him, he's greater in you. And the enemy has not gotten stronger. The enemy has not gotten more powerful. I want you to know that the church of the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, hallelujah, the body of the Lord, glory to God, the blood-bought church, hallelujah, has a covering over it by the Holy Ghost, glory to God, and if we'll put our faith, and we'll put our confidence, and we'll put our trust in that, we can look the danger square in the eye and say, come on in like a flood, because you're going to encounter something called the Holy Ghost, he's raising up a standard against you, you will not prevail, you will not penetrate, you will not win, I'm covered by the blood, I'm covered by God! Put my trust in him. Hallelujah. What are some characteristics about Are y'all getting blessed yet? I haven't seen a runner yet. Anyway, sometimes you just think you got to have two or three runners. We're going to hire some runners. Amen. What are some characteristics of this divine protection? Number one is continuous. Psalm 121.1. I will lift up my eyes. Unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Now understand this. This is Old Testament for I'm going to look to the Lord. I know some people come along and they go, well, we not, he's in us. I'm, listen, understand Old Testament, New Testament. Understand Old Testament terminology and New Testament revelation. When it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, it says, I'm going to look to the Lord. New Testament revelation is I will look to the Lord. Y'all getting it? He's not in, he's in you. I'm going to look to the Lord. Wherever he is, I'm looking to him. He's in me, I'm looking inside. Don't let somebody get cute and cause you to miss what God's trying to say here. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. I will look to the Lord. That's where my help comes from. Amen? My help cometh from the Lord. Again, all the words, all the times the word Lord is used in these passages I'm reading right now are the, the four caps, are the all caps, and it means Jehovah, Yahweh, the four letters, and it's really the covenant God. The, my help comes from my covenant God, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer. He will not allow thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold. He that keepeth Israel, what are we with? The Israel of God. Shall neither slumber nor sleep. That's not real quick. What's that mean? You can. 
when the calamities of life are going on, you can slumber and sleep. You can get your rest. You don't have to lie and wait in, in fear. You don't have to lie and wait uh, uh, afraid that something bad's going to happen. Because he that keeps you neither slumbers nor sleeps. Hallelujah. He's watching over you. I said he's watching over you. Can you say glory? glory. Somebody else say glory. glory. Somebody say shunda. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The covenant God is thy keeper. The covenant God is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The covenant God shall what? Preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The, sh the covenant God shall preserve thy going and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Once you come into covenant with God and you put your trust in him, he is content continually on, on, the, on the watch. He's continually at work. And what does it start out with? Here's the, here's the, here is the key. I, I will lift up my eyes or I will turn aside. I will put my focus in the Lord. Amen? So it's continuous. Second, it's unfailing. Joshua 1.5. God said, God's appeared to uh, come to Mo Joshua. Moses is dead. Says, I, you know, as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. He said, there should not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. This is what he says. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Oh, my God. God says, I will not fail thee. I'm not going to, and listen, I'm not going to forsake you. Well, there's bad stuff going on all over the world. Listen, listen, folks, there's bad stuff going on. And because there, there, there are attacks going on, satanically, strategically planned attacks to bring fear, to get people out of faith, to get them in, in, in turmoil and to get them uh, unbelieving. And Satan's work, working. He's after your faith. He wants to rob America of her faith. He wants to rob Christians all over the world of their faith. And, you know, and people, you know, so we got we to gotta get back to standing up. Uh, I remember when Mark Brzee went into East Germany um, a number of years ago, and got Brother Hagin's book, The Believer's Authority, in there. And those pastors got a hold of that book and got to reading that book, and they started confessing. The Iron Curtain's coming down, but there'll be no bloodshed in our country. The Iron Curtain's coming down, and there'll be no bloodshed in our country. Of all the countries, that, that when the Iron Curtain fell, boom, 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 the one that had no bloodshed was East Germany. They got a hold of it, and we got to get a hold of this. We can't walk in fear. You can't be paralyzed. You can't live your life in fear that a Muslim's going to come blow everybody up. I'm going to let you know something. He, I mean, he'll just blow himself up in his car before he gets wherever I am because God's not going to, I'm telling you, he's the protector's on, on guard with me. I'm telling you, I'm putting my trust in the Lord. Amen? He'll be putting his vest together and it'll just blow up in the house where he is. Blow him and his buddies up. Are you here? And they're just going to self-detonate and all mess up their, all their plans. They're coming to kill me. They're just going to have to. They're just going to have to meet the maker, meet, meet and be judged of God when they before they ever get here. Why? Well, He loves them too. He loves them, but I'm I'm His child. I'm born of Him. Hello, and I'm putting my trust in Him. Amen. He's not going to forsake me. He's not going to fail me. Uh, third, it's assuring. When you turn on the television and you turn on the news and you see all the stuff, I mean, it can just kind of, it can shake you. I said it can shake you. But what does the Bible say? Psalm, I mean, Isaiah 41.10, fear thou not. Why? For I am with thee. That's enough. Don't be afraid. Why? I'm with you. Don't be dismayed. Why? I'm your God. Now, God says here, by, and speaking to Isaiah, he says, fear thou not. That's King Jimmy for Don't be afraid. But why don't I have to be afraid? I'm with you. Oh, glory to God. We got the Lord going. I got this. Hello? The Lord's going, I got this. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be afraid. Why? He's got it. 
Now, I know we've seen that song, I got it. I got the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. It's, got, it's in my hands, in my feet. It's all over me, praise God. But I want you to know, when it comes to divine protection, he's got it. He says, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Don't get dismayed about everything that's going on. Why? I'm your God. I know all about it. Dad Hagen used to, I remember a number of years ago, he told the story about there was a family quarrel going on about some, some stuff about, uh, I think, a settlement on an estate or something in the family or whatever. And they were all fighting and bickering. They're going to sue each other and all this kind of stuff. And one of the main ringleaders came to his house to fuss about it to him. And he said, don't, he said, don't worry about it. I got some inside information. He said, the eyes got real big. And they got all kind of, you know, paranoid about what, what kind of information did he have. Did he, what did he know? What did he know about this that was going to mess up everything? You know what? They all got it settled out real quick because he had inside information. What was his inside information? God, his God's on his side. God will fix it. He just didn't tell him what the inside information was. I got some inside information. Hallelujah. Lord's going to make it happen. Lord's going to work it out. Amen. Don't be afraid. I'm, I'm with you. Don't get dismayed. Don't get all flustered. I'm your God. And because that was, look what he says here. He says, don't fear not, I'm with you. Be not dismayed, I'm your God. What? I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. <laughs> Somebody shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. What assurance. Remember that song, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. What assurance to know. Oh, what assurance to know. I don't have to be afraid because he's with me. And I don't have to get dismayed because he's my God. And in all this mess, he's going to strengthen me, he's going to help me, and he's going to uphold me. Church, don't be afraid. Don't get into fear. Don't see somebody with a, you know, a, a Muslim headdress and go, oh my God, they're a terrorist. They might be. But God's with me. And he knows. Hello? I said, he's with me and he knows. Don't you know Israel? I know I'm, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place. Is that right if I just jump all over the place? Hallelujah. All the people of, the, of, the, of some kind of ites, the termites, whoever, you know, the Isabites, the Jezebites, the Calebites, I mean, you know, the get, get on your case bites. I mean, they all came up against Israel and Jehoshaphat went to praying and the Lord said, you are not going to fight this battle. Put out before you tomorrow, before you go over there, put out all the praise team. Get the worshipers out front. Take all the guys with the, with the archers and get all the, the staff, uh, uh, the uh, spear guys, put them all at the back and get the praise team out front. Now they're going to go out there and they're going to say, praise ye the Lord. His mercy endures forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord. His mercy endures forever. A little, um, what's his face? Style. Remember he's a live guy? Don Francisco. He said, send the praisers out. They go out there singing, praise ye the Lord for his mercy endures forever and ever. They get to the enemy's camp, they're all dead. Now, I don't think it's because the singing was bad. I mean, if I was leading it, maybe that would be the case, but that's not the case. They went, they went to sing and praise you, the Lord. And the Lord sent ambushments against them. They turned on each other and killed each other. It took them three days to go get all the stuff and bring it back home. Not the bodies, the gold, the jewelry, all the stuff. They, I don't know why kingdoms did that, but that day when they went to war, they took all the money. I mean, you know, it's just, I mean, maybe they just didn't feel like if they took the army, it wasn't safe at home. Somebody would go steal it at home, so they kept it with them. I guess you know, that was their banking system. They take all their money with them, all their jewels, all their gold, all their diamonds, all that stuff, take it with them. So Israel took three days to go pack it all up and bring it home. But what happened? 
Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm going to fix this. And he did. Praise team, got, praise team took him out. Amen. The praise team took him out. See, we, we don't have to be afraid. God knows exactly what to do. I'm telling you, you could have a bunch of terrorists come into Greensboro next week. If we'll put our faith and trust in God, they'll go all get, each, get mad at each other, cut each other's heads off, blow each other up. I mean, you know, whatever. If we'll get, if we'll get the church into faith and you get your trust in God and you quit looking at the circumstances and you look at the most high, can you say amen? It's assuring you know he's with me. It's assuring you know he's my God. It's assuring you know that he's going to strengthen me. It's assuring you know he's going to help me. Amen. Fourth, the characteristic, it's, it's preserving. John 10, 29, my father which gave them me is greater than all. Praise God. You have got to stop thinking about God in terms of uh, mediocrity. That God's not big enough. God's not able. Hello? God, my, God, my Father is what? He's greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Jesus says that this characteristic of divine protection, it is preserving. Hallelujah. What does it protect us from? Hallelujah. Second three, uh, Thessalonians 3.3, 3, evil. God is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Keeps you from temptation. It protects you from temptation. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There's no temptation taking you but such as common to man. That simply means this. You ain't no special case. You're not facing something anybody else has never faced. It's all out there and God's got the answer for everything that's going to happen. Amen? Who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able. What's that mean? Now, nothing's going to show up that you're not ready for. You don't have the equipment to beat. Amen. But will with the temptation make an escape that you may be able to be able to bear. That word bear does not mean put up with. It means to be able to stand up under. Hallelujah. When the, when the temptations come, you can stand up in strength and in victory under it because it can't overtake you. Amen. Third, Persecution. 2 Timothy 3.11, Paul's writing and talking about all the things he's gone through. And one of the things he says in verse 11 is persecutions, afflictions, which came on me in Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord did what? He delivered me. God's your deliverer. Glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm facing tough times. He's your deliverer. As a matter of fact, he says he'll deliver all. He'll deliver you out of all of them. Amen? He'll deliver you from your enemies. Isaiah 59, 19, we read this earlier. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. I'm telling you, they come in one way, they got to flee seven. If it's just one guy showing up, like I said, it might be a suicide bomber. He's going to leave seven different ways. There'll be body parts all over because he's going to blow up somewhere else and you ain't going to get hit. You've got to get back to believing that God is the protector. God is the intervener. God, knows, if we'll put our faith and trust in him, he will deliver us. Amen. 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 He'll keep you from falling. Jude 24, verse 24 of Jude. Now on him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Go to the 91st Psalm. We'll read first eight verses or so here. He that dwelleth, now let me say something. He is your divine protector. But there is something that we need to be doing. We don't need to be running around afraid, talking fear, talking doubt, talking unbelief, talking Neil Cavuto, talking Shepard Smith, talking Sean Hannity, talking, I don't even know, uh, 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 Williams. What's the Williams guy's name on, on NBC? You know, I mean, I was, I was watching some of the stuff on Paris the other night and I thought, my goodness, these people are so agenda driven. I turn on one of the channels, you know, we don't know for sure that it's ISIS. Why? Because the president got up that day and said ISIS was contained. So they're protecting his, his reputation. And, of course, we, they all knew it was ISIS. But they're going, we don't know yet that it was ISIS. I don't give a rip. It's crazy, lunatic, radical Muslims who want to kill us, want to kill everybody. And they're either, if they're either ISIS or connected to groups like that, they're all in the same boat. You know, so all these commentators are just crazy. 
You can't get the truth anymore. Not from them. But you can get it from the spirit of truth. You can get it from the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost can tell you where, where not to go and that kind of thing. Amen. Hallelujah. So here. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Praise God. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress and my God in him will I trust. You got to get your faith back in God. Church, Satan will cut you off. I just talked to, uh, I was talking to uh, someone the other day and they know of a couple of big churches in Greensboro. Uh, one of the pastor retired, that church has lost 50% of this congregation. Another big church in town, uh, really big church. And they're not charismatic churches, but they're, uh, Pentecostal, but they're, they're big churches. One up, uh, is up um, off of um, Muir's Chapel Road there. They've lost 30% of their congregation. Churches are, you know, people, well, people are getting dis, disoriented spiritually. They're becoming dismayed and they're no longer trusting God. They're trying to figure life out. They're trying to get through life. They're just trying to make it through life somehow, some way. And there's no trust in God. But I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely, this word surely is a definitive term. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. <laughs> and from the noisome pestilence, animal diseases, anthrax. Pestilence is animal diseases. Anthrax is weaponized animal disease. He'll deliver us from that. I'm telling you, I mean, what are we going to do? I can't touch the mail. I can't open up the mail. I'm delivered from that. But any mail come, comes my way that's got anthrax in it, just gets lost. What was that? Post office does it anyway. Loses, loses packages, yeah. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth. The word of God. Oh, church. We need to start looking back at the word and say, God is my refuge. God is my fortress. Very present help in trouble. Therefore, I will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Amen? Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night and for the arrow that flieth by day, for the pestilence that walketh at darkness and the destruction that walketh at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. What's God saying? And all kinds of things be going on in the world. The world can be entreating and the world can be opening the door for the devil to work, but you as a believer, it will not come nigh thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. God's, God's protected. I remember that this part. He shall cover thee with his feathers. A number of years ago, I remember our uh, church we came out of, the pastor's wife was telling about a girl that she went to Christ for the Nations with, that, uh, you know, Gordon Lindsay's school down in Dallas. And the speaker had come in the, the day before, and they spoke on the 91st Psalm, and they were, they were preaching on the 91st Psalm, and, uh, you know, about God's protection and God covering you. And this girl left class that day and was walking off campus and walking down the sidewalk, and this car pull, pulled up on the sidewalk in front of her, cut off, guy jumped down and said, get in the car! And dry, went around and grabbed her to put her into the car. And all she could do was, she had just heard that sermon on the 91st Psalm. And she started going, feathers, feathers, I'm covered in feathers, 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 I'm covered in feathers. <laughs> Guy jumped, ran around, got back in his car and drove off. <laughs> he thought she was crazy. <laughs> she just heard the 91st Psalm sermon. And the Bible said he covered it with his feathers. So she said, I'm covered in his feathers. I'm protected. I'm covered. See, God knew exactly what to rise up in her to run him off. Feathers, feathers, I'm covered in feathers. We don't care what he thought, he's gone. Amen? Well, if any, 
the, the reason she did that, she just heard that sermon. And God brought up what was right out of that sermon, the very part of that scripture she needed for her victory in that hour. I don't care if the guy thought she was crazy. God's the one who inspired that, heard that sermon. God, the Holy Ghost, brought that up, and it began to come out of her mouth. And she began to scream, feathers, feathers, I'm covered in feathers. And he jumped in his car and drove off and left her standing there. Why? Because he's our protector. He'll cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you shall trust. Hallelujah. He'll keep you from calamities. Psalm, I mean, uh, Psalm 57, 1, be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. This is the key. We keep getting this recurring thing, trusting in God. You can't trust the government. You can't trust the police force. You can't trust the military to get it done for you. You've got to put your trust in God. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings I will make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Psalm, I mean Romans 8, 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? 2 Kings 6, we know the story. You can find it in 2 Kings 6. There's, a, there's a armies and a king that wants to come against Israel and take them out. Every time he sends his guys over, they, they're waiting, waiting for him. They take him out. And finally, he thinks he's got a traitor inside. He says, somebody's betraying us. Who's doing it? They say, hey, 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 boss. They got a prophet over there. You go in there with your counselors. Y'all sit down. You plan out your strategies. And he goes and prophesies and tells their king exactly what you just said. So this guy, being the brilliant type, are you ready? Going to send his guys over to kill the guy that God's speaking to about his plans. Like, he ain't going to know. But see, that's how dumb the unrenewed mind can be. That's how dumb the demon demonic minds can be. And so, Elisha gets up the next morning, walks outside of his tent, gets outside of his tent, and, uh, you know, the, the king, their king sent chariots and spearmen and all kinds of troops down there. They've encompassed the city. And he walks out there. His servant walks out there with him. And, they, and the servant looks up. You know, he kind of walks out, probably rubbing his eyes, you know, and he goes. Now, King James says, alas, master, you know, that's King Jamie for, oh, my God, we're in trouble. Okay? And so he looks up and says, we're in trouble. And Elijah says, there's more that's with us than with them. Cap, come be Elijah. So, you're Elisha. Stand there. Just act elisha -ish. So, servant goes. Servant goes. One, two. One, two, three. I already got the three, boss. We're in trouble. You're like, yeah, it's me. It's you. One, two, three. Now, I just got the three, and I hadn't gone around the city yet. We're in trouble. And so Elisha says, oh, you sit back down. thank you, thank you, Elisha. You take the mantle back off, turn it in. Okay. Yeah, knee dry clean. He says, open his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, he saw the host of the, the chariots of the armies of the Lord and camped round about them. And then he said, Lord, smite them with blindness. And so they, they came out and smoked that whole army with blindness so they couldn't see how to divide. And I want you to know something. John Nuzo was here with us a number of years ago, and he had a grandfather um, who I, I'm, I'm thinking was maybe been like in, in the mob or in, in organized crime, and he got saved and got filled with the Holy Ghost and decided he wasn't going to do that anymore. So he told them, I'm not doing this anymore. Of course, they say, yes, you are. No, I'm not. And, of course, they say, okay, and they kiss him on the cheek. You know what that means? You're dead. So he's walking home from church one night, and, and they've sent the people out to kill him, and they're hiding in the bushes. Except when they get two blocks away, those guys just paralyzed. And he's just singing to the Lord. He's walking down the street. And he comes by them. They're, he never even sees them. They're in, that, they're in their bushes. He walks on down the road. Next day, they see him out in the marketplace somewhere. And they, they come up to him and said, who's that guy you got with? Those guys you got with you? He said, what are you talking about? Well, last night, we were, we were sent to take you out. And he said, we were hiding in the bushes. Told him where it was. And said, but about two blocks away, you were walking. And said, uh, there was one guy on each side of you. And said, they, look, they started looking right at us. I don't, I don't know how they saw us. 
And then they put their hands inside their coats. And they walked with you all the way down the street. And when they got near it, they just looked at us as we passed by. He said, they said, who are they? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. I was by myself. There was nobody with me. I was by myself. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was somebody with it. God sent his angels. Hallelujah. I mean, they couldn't kill him because they, they're sitting there. They're waiting. They know that if they do anything, they're going to pull out and they're going to they're gonna get killed. They, they, how could they see us? We're in the dark. Yeah, Holy Ghost night vision. God's, let me tell you something, folks. You put your trust in God. Angels are encamped round about you. God's got his soldiers on your own, own call. He's got them surrounding you. Another you know, missionary told a story. They were living on a peninsula in a, in a place. They were, they were on a peninsula. And the people who didn't want them there were coming to kill them. When they got on their boat to come across the water to come up there, they saw all the way around the bank people in white robes with flaming swords. They couldn't get in there. Because God is my refuge. God is my fortress. He's a very present help in trouble. They put their trust in God. One of our Rama people was in, is, uh, in the Philippines. In, a part, in the Philippines, heavily Muslim now. They've, they've just infiltrated everywhere they can infiltrate. And she's down there preaching Jesus. And they sent guys with machine guns to kill her. And they walked in the back door of the church and she saw them and she just waved her hand at them and they fell to the floor and were frozen. Couldn't move. She preached a sermon, ministered to the sick, did everything. And when they got done, she looked back there and pointed her finger at them and they got released. They jumped up and ran out. Never saw them again. One of our Bible schools in Palermo, Sicily, Italy. Anybody know what Palermo is? Worldwide headquarters of the mafiosa. All right, that's where the big guys do. I mean, you know about the Godfather? That is the Godfather of Godfathers. Hey, the American guy knows nothing on me. He got nothing. I'm, 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 I'm the man. Okay. Well, they go there, start start a church and a Bible school, and and the um, they come and say, "You got to pay protection money." So we don't pay protection money. God's our port protector. You don't understand. You will pay us protection money. We're not doing it. So they send guys to enforce them. They got to the church, opened the doors, and when they tried to step through the opening, they got knocked back to the ground. And they did it several times. They finally gave it, went to them in the street. They saw them later and said, we don't know what's going on over We're just going to leave you guys alone. <laughs> Open door. It just ran into it and bounced off. God is your protector. I said, God is your protector. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.